used to get together my little four track and or even like the reel to reel we were using to record music on. Um, and we went to college together and we, we always sort of had in the back of our minds a way to, to collaborate. But it really took, I mean, over a decade before we were able to actually do it well. You know? Right. And even, even in those days, I mean, when we weren't really collaborating together, we, you know, I lived in Chicago at the time, and so he would, so we were separated for, for about 12 years, of, you know. Um, but he would come visit me every few years, and when, we, when he would visit, that's just what we would do, is we'd you know, make a sculpture in my backyard or something, you know, that, that was a sound generator or something like that. So, so it was always still there in the background. Um, probably one of the things that started to change for me is I sort of got really sick of going to music school, and uh, I, you know, I finished it all up, but decided that I didn't want to teach music in a university setting, and um, that was really the whole point of getting that degree. So. As that started to change in my mind, I also happened to get a job at the you know, School of the Art Institute where I got exposed to a lot of people making art who were using computers and electronics. Um, and sort of that with him combined with, you know, Jeff asking me some technical questions about how, how can you work on insta installations and make them work the way he wants them to, it just sort of started to make sense for me to, to get more involved in that way. Yeah. yeah, it's a continual process that we're, that we're working through, really. I mean, there's probably an art historical sort of aesthetic that I was always attracted to, certain constructivist things from the past, and, but I, I couldn't justify just making things for no reason. So I had to come up with reasons why they needed to exist, so I'd create systems. And early on, there were crude systems that, you know, made a noise or made a light flash or something like that to get their viewer involved. But now that we have a lot more skills and um, experience, I'm actually able to do the depiction and stuff that I was interested in early on in painting. And I think we've given John a context where he can really explore his electronic music composition. Right, right. And the scenes are like vignettes from, from a, that are taken from a story that you may have to put piece together yourself a little bit, but, um, but we, we do have ideas about with, you know, what's going on, but we're not trying to literally tell a, uh, you know, a story with a, you know, a, a, a purpose or a meaning that, you know, that you get from it when you, when you finish. But I mean, I think there's a, the structure is there and you're, you're taking you know, part in that structure. But yeah, I mean, to give you an idea, it's, it's, it's definitely not a sort of randomly assembled collage of imagery. Um, it's definitely put together in such a way that you, you, you know, you have a 12 minute experience from beginning to end that, that you know, creates a, a line. So it's, the program itself, what, what, it's, what its job is to do is to, on the one hand, control all of the, the physical um, mechanisms that need to be activated in each of these sculptures. At the same time, it's generating the music that will accompany the, the imagery that comes from those, those sculptures um, in real time and, and synchronizing it with what's going on in the scene. So it's, it's creating basically the, the, the film soundtrack. A lot of the main characters in, in the show are musical instruments, actually. Or sound-making um, devices. Right, which, which Jeff has made these miniaturized musical instruments. Um, and so the, the music has to be uh, correlated exactly with these because we're creating the illusion that these miniaturized instruments are actually playing. And in this, in this case, they're physically they're, moving right. at the same time that the sound's being produced. And they are making incidental noises, but the sounds that he's assigning to them are professional samples. It's, it's, all, it's all sampled sound, but it's being controlled in real time, and it doesn't, doesn't play exactly the same thing every time you, you watch the sequence. And so, you know, if, if you watch it a number of times, you can start to pick up on little details that are always, always different. So. Everything's being visited inside. They're all scale models or little micro-environments I've created, little sets for each scene. So, I mean, there are 18 cameras, I think, in this show in 10 different boxes. And they're being sequenced according to our, our or story in, the, in their being activated as needed. Um, and we also have cross-fading technology so we can overlap a scene on top of another scene or do a slow dissolve. I mean, we can emulate real film. You know? That whole discovery 
sort of mystery and discovery. I mean, I, I like to give that to the viewer. You know, but there, there are multiple levels going on here because then on, on top of all that, on top of that experience that you have walking in here and interacting with the sculptures, there, there is the, the aesthetic quality and the tone of the actual film that we're producing, which um, the background story could be a little disturbing if you, if you use your imagination. It, it, might, it might not be, but I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's some elements of humor in it as well, I think. Um, I mean, we have, we do have a, an automated tuba in this in this piece. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but for having zero like characters, people, or whatever, it's right. like how do you create tension within the you know the plot line? I mean, music. I mean, so right. it's got to you know escalate and come down. Or, you know. Right. Well, we have a polka band in this one. So. <laughs> <laughs>